Okay, I just did the whole thing and it cut off part of the screen. So we're going to try this again. First things first, we're going to create a plane. This be our ground plane for the physics to hit. Um, to get these stretchy um, icons, you want to be selected on the model up here. And it'll let you stretch these out. We're going to create a sphere. Bring this up. Scale this down. Now, for Voronoi Fracture, it's up here in MoGraph, Voronoi Fracture. And in order to fracture a piece of geometry, you have to drag it underneath it. And you'll see that it's already broken it apart. Now, to enable the physics simulation, we're going to right click on Voronoi Fracture, go to Simulation Tags, Rigid Body. And in the plane, we're going to right click, go to Simulation Tags, go to Collider Body. So, Rigid Body is what you select for anything that you want the physics to be generated from. And the plane. Um, or a collider body is anything that that's going to be um, uh, have its physics simulation up against. So we can hit play here and it's already going to start. Now I see all the objects are just sliding across like there's no friction. We're going to go to our dynamics tag here under the plane, go to collision. And you'll see in the bottom here we have bounce. We're going to bring that. I usually do the same thing every time. 5 for bounce, 200 for friction. And we'll do the same thing for the dynamics tag for the sphere. Come down here and collision, 5, 200. And you'll see that now it kind of stays in place. Okay, so that's the very basics of doing it. So if you come up here into Voronoi Fracture, you can go to Sources. This right here, this point uh, generator, is what's actually breaking it apart. You can see all the particles that it's using to break it apart. We can come down here to Point Amount, and that's what's going to break it apart anymore. So we can go to 1000, and it's going to make 1000. Now to hide all these particles so you can see better, it's this icon right here. Just hide that. And now, when we press Play, it's going to slow it down quite a bit. see that it's a ton more pieces. Now if we want, instead of it all just breaking apart into a million pieces, if we want it to kind of clump some of them together so only the pieces that take the brunt of the force break, around, break in individual pieces but the rest kind of clump together, we can click on Voronoi Fracture, go to Connectors, and go Create Fixed Connector. Uh, see that it create a, created a little connector icon underneath the Voronoi Fracture. We can select that. Um, right now, if we press... Actually, I'm going to lower our numbers down so this uh, goes a little bit faster. We're going to go back to Sources. We're going to go back down to, say, 100. Now, since this connector is enabled, it's probably too strong, so it's not even going to break apart. Oh, it broke apart a little bit. We'll lower this connector down to, say, 10,000. Yeah, so you see that it's keeping these ones clumped together. We can go even lower, down to, say, 100. Oh, that's too low. 500. Oh, that's even too low. We'll go back up to 1,000. Oh, now it's broken, and now it doesn't want to work at all. There we go, went up to 10,000. So that's, um, like if you're doing a brick wall, and you want to throw something through it, uh, if you don't have this connector on there, every single individual brick is going to fly apart, which isn't very realistic. You want, you know, this will clump four or five of those bricks together, on the parts that doesn't make a direct hit and those will kind of fly off grouped together. So that's something to keep in mind, this connector. All right, so let's go do another little simulation here. I'm just gonna delete that sphere. We'll create a cube. This will be a wall. Um, 
All right, now bring this cube under the Voronoi fracture. It's broken apart. So now say we're going to have a ball pass through right about here. We want all these pieces to be chunked up a little, quite a bit smaller. So what we can do is we can use geometry to do that. Bring the sphere in. I'm going to bring the cube back to center. We'll go coordinates 0 or no. Zero this out. Okay. So now it's centered up with the sphere. Shrink the sphere down to probably about this size. Now we're going to use the sphere to chunk apart this part of the cube Voronoi. So what we do is we go Voronoi fracture sources. This is again what's breaking this uh, cube apart. Bring the sphere down in here. We're just going to click the sphere, we're going to change vertices to volume, so it's going to use the volume of that sphere to break this apart. And I'm going to hide those particles again. Now, if we come down here to point amount, sphere is selected, we can crank this up to say 1000, and you can see that it's breaking apart just this part. Okay. So now if we want, I'm going to hide this sphere by double clicking this top dot right here. So now we want something to pass through it. So we'll create another sphere. We'll call this wrecking. Shrink it down. And we'll just keyframe it. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Actually, that's pretty good. And we're going to keyframe it on 0. Go up to, say, 45 have it pass through. Keyframe again. It's going to go pretty slow, but at least we'll be able to see. I'm going to hide that wrecking ball again. Now you'll see when we press play, the cubes are automatically just the physics simulation is starting. We don't want that. So we're going to go up to our dynamics tag in the cube fracture, and we're going to go to dynamics you see trigger immediately. We're going to want to take this to on collision. So nothing's going to happen until a collider object, so a wrecking ball, which we're going to right click of the simulation tags collider body. Nothing will happen until that sphere makes contact with the cube. So actually I'm going to unhide the wrecking ball. Press play. You can see it starts the simulation. Now you can see it's breaking apart everything. All these are going. If it, this sphere was moving a little bit faster, this whole thing would just explode. We don't want that. So what we can do is go into the dynamics tag again on the Voronoi fracture. And down here, trigger, trigger velocity threshold. What this does is it tells each one of these, you're not going to move until a certain amount of force is given to you. So if we bring this up to, say, one foot, now the objects that are making contact with this are going to receive enough uh, velocity to start their dynamics. But these ones on the edge shouldn't. My mic cut out. Um, I can't remember where it cut out. So these aren't going to have as much force applied to them, so they should stay in place. We'll see what happens here. Yep. So that worked pretty well. All right. Um, now, what I did in that uh, really cool simulation where, like, wood fragments and everything were blown out, I created another cube here under the Voronoi fracture and I had it layered and it was quite a bit thinner and let's see if I can do this uh, right away so this cube we need to drag it underneath the Voronoi I'm gonna name this wood actually no we can't have it in the same one it's gotta be separate so we're gonna create I'm gonna call this stone we're going to create another 
Voronoi fracture, bring it down to this wood, and we're going to call this wood. Now, I'm going to go to the sources point generator, and I'm going to bring this to say 1000. Hide the particles. Now, let's see if I can find this um, object scale cells. So what this is going to do is right now all of these are uniform. To make the wood texture, we can start to drag this down. It's going to change the scale of it. So now we kind of have these wood fragments. Now, right now, there's no dynamics tag on this wood. So we need to right click. Actually, let's just copy this one since we already have the uh, bounce and friction set how we want. So control click or control click and drag down. That'll duplicate. So now we have a dynamics tag on this wood fracture. So now when we hit play, now we have all these wood fragments as well. Pretty cool.